Welcome back, everyone, to State of Belief Radio. I'm Welton Gaddy. When Matthew Vines came out as gay a few years ago, he was already searching for a way to integrate his evangelical Christian faith and his personal identity. Undaunted by the culture war rhetoric that usually precludes a more theologically based study of this issue, earlier this year, Matthew produced a provocative book titled God and the Gay Christian, the Biblical Case in Support of Same-Sex Relationships. He also founded a nonprofit called the Reformation Project. Part of its core mission is to help equip Christians to advocate for LGBT persons within faith communities and a regional training conference to advance that mission, and that conference is coming up on November 6th through 8th in Washington, D.C., with early registration closing this coming Tuesday. It's a perfect time to welcome Matthew Vines back to State of Belief Radio. Uh, Matthew, it was a pleasure to talk with you uh, when your book came out, and I'm glad to have you in studio today. Thank you so much for having me, Wilton. You've really got an impressive list of speaker schedule for the upcoming conference. Uh, So just start with some name dropping. (laughs) All right. Well, I'm really excited about how many different leaders in this conversation in the church are coming together for the Reformation Projects Conference, which is here in Washington, D.C., November 6th through the 8th. Our two keynote speakers are Allison Robinson, who was recently featured in an MSNBC mini documentary. She's a the Transitions Pastor at Calvary Baptist, and one of the, I think, maybe the only openly transgender clergy member in the country, certainly the only Baptist one. She's Mm -hmm. phenomenal. Uh, Also, David Gushy, who is a very prominent evangelical ethicist from Georgia, will be speaking on the last night of the conference. Who else is coming? Gene Robinson will be there. Jane Clementi will be there. Justin Lee of the Gay Christian Network will be there. Frank Schaefer the United Methodist pastor who's in the news this year will be there. Danny Cortez, the Southern Baptist pastor who has also been in the news after changing his position. Ken Wilson, yes. the Vineyard pastor who's been in different articles about changing his position as well. Amy Butler, who was recently named the first woman pastor at Riverside Church in New York. Yeah. Uh, also, Derek Harkins, the pastor of 19th Street Baptist here in Washington, D.C. Brad Braxton who works at the Ford Foundation and was, before Amy Butler, was the senior minister at Riverside Church. Mm -hmm. We're just going to be bringing in all sorts of people. Nicholas Mwanda is a Ugandan refugee seeking asylum here in D.C., well, here in the United States, living in D.C., because he was essentially hounded out of Uganda because he started one of their first transgender advocacy groups there. Mm -hmm. He's trans. And so just a lot of really powerful voices that are coming together uh, to show where the church is and should be moving and how others can shift in that direction as well. It's a great group, and and as a matter of fact, it sounds like a roster of people that we've had on State of Belief Radio, too. I'm, I'm glad that uh, you're drawing on these wonderful resources. Talk about the uh, specific subjects that are going to be covered in the conference. The conference is primarily a Bible-based training event for Christians who are LGBT-affirming or at least sympathetic, but who want and need the biblical tools in order to go back to their pastors, their parents, their peers, their colleagues, and say, here is why I don't just think this in my heart, I don't just feel this way in my heart, but I can actually defend my beliefs from a Bible-based standpoint, and I'm not giving up on the authority of Scripture. I am maintaining my belief in the Bible's centrality and authority while also arguing that the Bible does not speak to the issue of LGBT Christians in a way that should require us to exclude them and their committed relationships from the life of the church. So it's very very content-focused, all about Scripture, and how do you talk about Scripture and LGBT issues with Christians who aren't there yet, where the bar for persuasion is high but where the conversation is possible? Are you going to be doing that not just by talking about Scripture, but by actually engaging passages of Scripture that uh, people have trouble interpreting and understanding the application of that to the issue? 
Yes, so actually Jim Brownson is a New Testament professor from Western Theological Seminary in Michigan who wrote a really phenomenal book on this subject last year, more of a seminary level book than mine is. And he and I are going to be leading the Bible teaching and training sessions where we're going to focus, yes, we'll focus on the six passages, which are sometimes called the clobber passages, although that's not the, it's not a phrase I really <laughs> use, but the the main six passages, but also more than that, there are really foundational theological questions and arguments about gender complementarity, about how we understand gender roles in and the role of patriarchy from this from the Old Testament to the New Testament to moving into the Christian church today. There are there are a lot of really foundational theological principles and applications as well that we'll be discussing. So people will definitely leave the conference though. If anybody has ever had a conversation with a pastor and the pastor and they're they're telling their pastor what's in their heart about their heart for LGBT people and the pastor opens up his or her Bible to for instance Romans chapter 1 and then you don't know what to say. You just feel stuck and you feel sick inside because you know you don't agree, but you feel like it's a dead end. This conference is designed to change that and to make it so that once you come to this conference and go back home, you can sit in that room, in that chair across from your pastor or anyone else and have so much more confidence because they can bring up Romans 1 or 1 Corinthians 6 or whatever passage it is, and you're going to be prepared and actually have cogent persuasive responses to continue the conversation don't let the conversation get railroaded or shut mm -hmm. down there and that we've been stuck there for so long this conference and the tools that we are giving people at the conference is designed to change that well i want to make clear and you've done it there but i'm doing it uh with redundancy intentionally this is not a, a conference for official religious leaders or ordained clerics alone. This is a conference for people who are interested in this issue and have an interest in what the Bible really does say about it. Yes, and while we are pleased and honored to have a number of clergy there, in many ways it's lay people who can have an even bigger impact in certain communities. If you're in a church where there hasn't been an open conversation on this issue. Even if the pastor wanted to change his or her mind on this, it probably wouldn't be received very well. And we've all seen how this issue can play out in very divisive, nasty ways. However, if you're a lay leader in the church, you don't have as much to lose. It's, you don't have your career on the line. You're in a position where if you have the right arguments, tools, and resources at your disposal, you can use those to help to open up the conversation, slowly shift the dynamic, mm -hmm. and make it so that over time, your pastor has more room to work with when he or she wants to be partnering or collaborating or changing their mind. Mm -hmm. How do you keep yourself from being distracted by the ongoing anti-gay messages emanating from the religious right? Well, I don't consider it a distraction because that is just the status quo. It is what it is. It's not surprising. It's certainly not good. But I can't let myself get worn out by that because the entire reason I've been doing this is because I know that's the status quo. In so many places, in countless churches among millions of Christians, that's where the dialogue is. And so that's why we have to be strategic and intentional and persistent in order to change that. If every time something terrible happened, you let yourself get off track, mm -hmm. you would just be being beaten around constantly and right. getting nothing done. So yeah. we've got to so it, you got you got to focus on the long term. If you have a long term perspective, it's easier to stay grounded. I know that you've had uh, one smaller conference uh, already. Um, is is this an expansion of that, or is it an intensification of it? It is not an intensification. Okay. It is an expansion. The conference that we did last year was considerably more intense in terms of its curriculum than this conference will be. It was for 50 Christians, application only, who spent more than three months reading 1,500 pages of academic literature and then came for four days of what I called a Bible boot camp. That is not what this conference is. This conference is for people who may not be ready to dedicate their lives to this cause, but who could really benefit from 
better resources and messages. So there is no advanced curriculum. People do not have to do that kind of study. You'll have to pay attention in the training sessions at the conference, but it's just two and a half days. It's not four days. It's the type we're casting a wider net this time. And from this conference, we will be inviting some of our most promising attendees to apply for our next leadership development program, mm -hmm. which will be similarly intense to last year's. And that will happen in early 2015. And then we're doing an, our next major regional event in Atlanta in June and one in Kansas City in the fall of 2015. And out of each of these events, we are going to be cultivating and building up leaders, mm -hmm. long term leaders for the long haul who will be putting through these intensive leadership programs. But certainly you don't have to be ready to do that in order to come to this conference and to get a lot out of it. How does a person register? For this conference. If you go to reformationproject.org, all the information is there. In the months since the release of your book, what's been the biggest surprise for you on the way the message has been handled? The biggest surprise, honestly, even for an optimist like me, has been how ready a lot of people are to have this conversation. In the especially even in the evangelical Christian world, I have been able to. I feel like I have made more progress just in terms of where I've been able the 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 people I've been able to reach and be in ongoing dialogue with than I expected to by this point. I expected that it would be a harder, slower slog, mm -hmm. and it, in some respects it is. But there have been a number of incredibly encouraging developments this year that are that just demonstrate this conversation not only is it not going to go away but it might open up even faster than i mm -hmm. hoped or than i thought i could hope for yeah. matthew uh, a lot has happened as you've said during this last year to you and um, you've had some good surprises i know you've had some challenges as well uh what is the what's the last year done to you personally? It's been invigorating. It really has. Because when I I don't mind criticism in the slightest, especially on this issue, because what it means is you have a voice. You're not going to be criticized if you don't have a voice and if people don't know that you exist. So when I was first trying to, to come out 2010, 2011, that was my biggest struggle was just to feel like I was visible and that people even felt like they needed to engage with what I was saying at all. That's been the struggle of so many LGBT Christians, is feeling voiceless, powerless, alone. So to see how much that continues to change is incredibly encouraging and gives me a lot of fuel mm -hmm. going forward. Matthew Vines is the author of God and the Gay Christian, The Biblical Case in Support of Same-Sex Relationships. He's the founder of the Reformation Project, which is organizing a training conference in Washington, D.C. next month for Christians who would like to be better equipped to advocate on behalf of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people in their faith communities. Matthew, I, uh, I love the positive spirit that you bring to your work. Uh, I really respect the commitment to Holy Scripture that you have and the passion you have for helping people understand the message of Scripture in relation to um, the sexual orientation of a lot of different people. And I wish you success in this conference, and in fact, I uh, affirm and wish you success in all that you're doing, and I appreciate you taking time to be a part of State of Belief Radio. You'll always be welcome here. Well, thank you so much, Welton. Thanks for having me, and I hope to see you and your listeners at the event.